it amazes me every single time because most of these shots are in focus and properly exposed. Not only that, but they are immediately available. Post-processing is something very accessible, easy and fast today. And we can share our images with the whole world instantly from the field. Clearly, technology has made photography much easier and faster nowadays, but many photographers think and believe that this is not necessarily a good thing. While many film photographers have embraced the convenience of digital, others think that is too easy and too convenient. Even though I am part of the first group and I have embraced digital for my photography, I can see the point of why making photography too easy can be detrimental. That's what we are going to be talking about in this video, that balance that I believe exists in photography and many other aspects of life and how we can find our own, because this is something very unique to all of us. Indeed, technology has made photography much more convenient in many ways. Not only has removed the technical difficulty, but it has also made it much cheaper and accessible to everyone. As you might know, I shot exclusively on film for a couple years using a big and chunky medium format film camera. And while I sometimes miss the more tactile experience and the slower approach that it forces you to take, I do not miss the weight, having to meter every scene, having to carry a tripod with me on every single trip, worrying about how many shots I have left in the roll, or about messing something up while developing the film at home. So it is tempting to describe all of those as the disadvantages of film photography or the advantages of digital photography, but I don't think it's that simple. You see, making something too easy has downsides, and digital photography can definitely feel very boring sometimes and repetitive, and less of a craft. There is a balance we must find here. I believe that photography should be hard enough that is engaging but also not so hard that we feel overwhelmed. We need it to be challenging enough that we feel like we are working hard to achieve the image we want, while it being not so challenging that we feel it's unattainable for us. Have you ever played Tetris? It is by far my favorite video game of all time. Anyway, if you haven't, this applies to any game. You see, usually the first levels are the easiest, so we can get used to the rules of the game. Over time, as we progress and we become better and better at playing the game, the game becomes harder and harder. This is because if the difficulty didn't increase, we get bored really quick. But it has to do so in a gradual way, because if the game became too hard too quick, we would give up fast. This is a balance a game designer must find, the perfect match between the abilities and the skills of the player and the difficulty of the game. Because it is at that point, at the intersection where our skills are doing something, match the difficulty of the task, that we experience the most satisfaction. So in Tetris, at the beginning, we feel like the pieces are falling too slow, but gradually the game speeds up. Eventually, there comes a point where our abilities at playing Tetris match exactly the speed of the game. It is pushing us, it is hard, but we can still do it. And in fact, every piece we land successfully at this point feels much more rewarding than the ones that we were landing at the beginning when it was too easy. For a few seconds, you feel amazing because it makes you feel like you are good at the game, before crashing you, of course. I think this can be applied to photography, where something very similar happens. Photography is most enjoyable when our abilities match the difficulty of the shot we are attempting to take. So in making our photography process harder than it could be, in a way it's like we are setting obstacles for ourselves to overcome. We fabricate this artificial struggle because we like to experience that overcoming of the obstacles because it feels rewarding, because it's hard, but we've done it. This is why photography can be so fulfilling. There are very few things in life that match our abilities. Almost everything is either too hard or too easy for us. But because of the wide range of cameras available to us today and all of the situations we can put ourselves 
in, we can tailor our photography experience. And that's why photography is an activity that anyone can take on, because we just need to adjust the difficulty level to our skills, to our abilities. So how can we do that? How can we construct our photography to be there at the sweetest spot, neither too hard nor too easy, just perfect? Well, I'll tell you what I do. You know I like to photograph in bad conditions. In those situations, even the simplest and easiest tasks can be very challenging to perform. The difficulty bar is pretty high in those situations, so I try to level the field to lower that bar to, to, to where I am, to my level, by using a digital camera with a super zoom lens. I don't have to switch lenses uh, that often, and I use automatic modes and autofocus, so I only have to worry about finding a good composition, a beautiful uh, subject to photograph, and about not killing myself or hurt myself, because those uh, situations can be very harsh. But if the conditions are nice and I have plenty of time, well, then I will use a prime manual lens or a film camera. I will also be more likely to do long exposures that require a more sophisticated setup. This way, every situation is challenging for different reasons, but I feel like I am pushing myself when I do photography, and that makes the process more engaging for me. It doesn't get boring. It's like Tetris. I'm trying to keep this game at a point where it feels challenging, but I'm still able to do it. At the point where my abilities operate in the camera and my physical condition match the conditions out there and the scene that I'm trying to photograph. Even though I love hiking and walking in general, I've always been a big fan of car photography. That's why when I saw this tweet from Ben Horn not too long ago, I knew that the answer could be quite a few images. These are just some of the many images that I've made over time within just a few hundred feet from the car. Why is this? Well, obviously with the car we can travel farther in a shorter period of time, so we're going to have more chances to take more photos, but I think it goes deeper than this. I think that we all have limited energy, and the more energy we spend on getting somewhere, on setting up the camera, on all the things that we have to think about before even pressing the shutter, the less energy we're going to have to find a good image. I think this is why I rarely make good images on long and strenuous hikes. Not only because the place is not as accessible and I can't be there at the best time, but also because my mind keeps thinking about the way back, about if I have enough clothes, enough water, enough food, about the drive back home, is it getting dark, do I have lights, is it going to be safe? Photography is not necessarily the priority in those situations. But when I'm next to the car, I don't have to worry about any of those things. I don't have to worry about the logistics. It's all about getting the shot. This is just another example of lowering the bar enough to meet us at the right spot, where everything fits together nicely. I love to know what you think about this. Do you make your photography harder on purpose so it feels more rewarding and more engaging? Do you prefer to go the easy route? Or maybe somewhere in between, it depends on the situation and where you are and what you are trying to photograph. In any case, I hope this video was uh, useful. And before letting you go, I just wanted to really quick highlight the work of Eric Mir, one of my uh, patrons, one, a big supporter of my work. I'm also an admirer of his photography because it takes me back to uh, when I lived in Oregon, a beautiful place. You can check him out and his work out on his Instagram page, on his uh, website. And of course, thank you to all of my patrons and to you for watching uh, this video. I hope to see you in the next one.